Now that we're married, don't you find that I spend way less time doing astrophotography? No. Oh, banana. St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, and by the luck of the Irish, we've got some clear skies here in St. Catharines. Last night was clear too, and you can bet your biscuit I was out shooting. It just so happens to be new moon tonight, which means we'll be shooting in full color, baby. Please join me for a night of backyard deep sky astrophotography using a camera and telescope. Wait a minute, isn't it like two in the afternoon right now? Am I really so ahead of the game for once that I'm not scrambling to get up and running? I guess I'll just wait till it gets dark then. For me, March and April is all about galaxies. It's nicknamed galaxy season because of the wide assortment of galaxies available for imaging. Last year I spent some time imaging galaxies around this time on M81, M82, 106, and Markarian's chain. At that time, it was my first go at using a non-DSLR camera, the ZWO ASI 071 MC Cool. That camera really blew me away, especially in terms of low noise qualities. I still feel like that RGGB sensor is a little hard to correct the colors in post-processing, but it can be done. I return my demo version of the 071 back to Ontario Telescope and I moved on to some uncooled cameras such as the Altair Hypercam 183C. Fast forward a year later and I've got another ASI camera to use, this time the 294 MC Pro. I've only used it a handful of times and I certainly haven't given it a fair review. While using the 294 I'm reminded of the 071 MC Cool, although this version is almost half the price. There is a ton of discussion about this camera on cloudy nights. I really get a kick out of pushing the more affordable cameras to their full potential. You have to remember that I was quite happy shooting with a $200 DSLR for several years. If you're looking to photograph M81 and M82 through your telescope, look no further than the Big Dipper. These two interacting galaxies are hanging out around this bright star Dube. M81 is a colorful spiral galaxy while M82 is an irregular starburst galaxy that's emitting hydrogen alpha filaments. To capture these filaments requires a lot of time and some added narrowband H-alpha imaging layered into a color image. I won't be capturing a whole lot of that tonight, but I hope to at least show some of that red, red hydrogen gas inside M82. In between both of these galaxies is what's known as the Integrated Flux Nebula. And this is some very faint dust and gas that resides around the area between M81 and M82. And it requires a lot of time uh, and some dark skies. That won't be showing up in any of my images anytime soon from the backyard. But that's not to say that it can't be done with amateur equipment. I just love the idea of just pouring in more and more exposure time to reveal faint details even from the city where it can be really challenging. In the end, it's always worth it and it's very rewarding. I'm running the camera using astrophotography tool. This makes it really easy to automate the imaging session. The ASI 294 connects to APT no problem using the appropriate drivers. And once connected, I start the cooling process right away. APT has a function called the cooling aid where I will set the temperature to minus 20 degrees. Now that's the, the sensor in this camera is going to go to minus 20. 
and it's a gradual process, two degrees at a time. It'll probably take about five, about five minutes or so, and then that sensor will be ice cold. Sadly, minus 20 degrees Celsius is about only about 15 degrees colder than ambient out here tonight. However, this makes a huge difference uh, in terms of reducing noise. It creates pictures uh, a DSLR camera never could using the same amount of exposure time. I've got the camera connected to my Explore Scientific ED-102 triplet refractor. There's a Bader Moon and Sky Glow filter uh, fitted in there between the telescope and the camera to get rid of some of this bull light pollution that's all around me. Man, it's so nice to just have it, everything all polar aligned and ready to go, balanced. Is this what it feels like to you guys with permanent setups? I actually had a guy give me a hard time about cable management the other day. astrophotography tool. We've got everything set up. I just hopped inside the garage here for a second to do this. So I'm going to shift click connect and I've got the Bayer filter for the uh, ASI 294 here, the RGGB. It's an ASCOM uh, camera and I click OK here and in the drop down the ASI camera driver that I've installed and the settings I've been using here is Unity Gain. This is what worked best for me on the 071 MC Cool, and it's uh, judging by the images I saw last night, this is what's working best for this camera as well. Um, RAW 16 bit mode, OK. And OK, and the camera is connected. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I said, is the cooling aid. Uh, I'm going to set the target temperature to minus 20 degrees, cooling step of 4 degrees each time. I'm going to change that to 3, that's a little aggressive, and start. And so the current temperature here is just at about 0, and that's going to start dropping. In the meantime, uh, I'm just going to go live view here and see how close we are to our target. Uh, it's set to a four second exposure that will loop right now. Oh wow, there it is right there. So, eat your heart out, plate solving. This was a three star alignment. <laughs> okay, so at this time, uh, I'm going to turn off the live view because I think that slows down the cooling process. And I'm going to connect the guide scope with PHD2 guiding. And again, this is all so much easier because I set everything up last night, so all the focus is relatively close from yesterday. Um, not many uh, adjustments will need to be made. So my little GP Cam 2 by Altair and the Ioptron mount ASCOM driver because I'm connected to the CEM60. And we'll turn the mount panel on here. So now I can control the mount here from the PC without touching the scope. We'll take a little loop here. Let's see if we're still in focus. It certainly looks like we are. So I might as well start my... Uh, actually, why don't we frame up our target just a little bit better and then we'll do guiding. All right. My control panel here. Let's just go east. Oops, I'm not on live view. see where we are. Oh, wrong way. We'll go west a little bit. Maybe too far. So the reason you're seeing this is just because we're waiting for that four second loop to finish. So pretty cool to see uh, these two galaxies in almost a, a live view. Like, I mean, we can go down to a two second exposure and we'll still see them. Very cool. Oh, look at that. The camera's almost at minus eight already. That's great. So these are almost perfectly framed up. Uh, I want to keep them both obviously in the center of the frame, evenly spaced. 
Uh, that's pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to leave it at that. That should match nicely with the frames I took yesterday. The camera's at almost minus 9 now. I'm going to turn live view back off. Now we'll do our PhD2 guiding. So it's looping here at a one second exposure. I'm going to do uh, auto select star. And before that, I'm going to make sure that we start a new calibration. And it might give me a little warning here because we're close to the, yeah, this far from the celestial equator will be error prone for best results. That's, uh, that's just the way it goes when you're photographing M81 and M82. They're kind of, they're in the northern sky, really close to Polaris. Uh, and uh, over the years, it has caused me some trouble as far as guiding, but last night was fine, and hopefully tonight will be too. So that's going to go through the calibration process, which will take probably about a minute. We're getting closer to our target temperature here. And uh, so in the meantime, why don't we just go to our imaging plan. So we're going to do a new light frames plan, and we'll call it ASI 294M81, M82, night 2, <laughs> because that's what I called it yesterday. Uh, exposure, I think we'll want to go less, a little, little longer than that. Um, tonight, I think, what did I want to do? I'll stick with 240. So those are four minute subs, uh, bin two by two. So that's going to make the image um, half the size of if it was bin one by one, but it'll also be um, a little cr crispier, if you will. Uh, pause, we'll do five seconds between frames and count. I want to shoot 50 of them. Add as new. Okay, so that's all set and ready to go. And uh, we'll be able to press the start button once PhD is done and this camera is cooled. So guiding is going. The graph looks really good so far. Very nice to see. So yeah, and uh, we're going to be off to the races in probably about 30 seconds. Well, the uh, 294 is firing away on Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy right now. The individual four minute frames look excellent. My guiding's perfect. Uh, I can't wait to just soak in some more data and create a nice image. I'm looking at about six hours of total exposure time, so it should be a nice smooth uh, photo under the new moon in full color. Uh, man, it's, it's, this is like, they're one of my favorite targets on, on a new moon using a color camera. This is really uh, some of my favorite stuff we're doing here tonight. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video and I'll share the full uh, photo details. Check out the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro camera. Uh, it's much more affordable than the 071 I was using. Uh, and to me, the performance is comparable. I mean, if you look into the technical details, uh, there'll be some guys on uh, cloudy nights that will tell you why it's not nearly as good as the 071, but that being said, uh, with my personal real world experience, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, just blows the DSLR out of the water. I just made eye contact with one of my neighbors on her back porch and she's like, what the hell is this kid doing in the backyard? I got spotlights and telescopes and I'm talking to myself. 